Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Manjunath. I'm a pediatrician and allergy and asthma specialist based in Bangalore. So uh, today uh, in my series of uh, videos regarding allergies and asthma, today I've planned to talk about wheezing in children less than five years of age. This asthma is basically divided as per the age. Uh, in children less than five or six years of age, 6 to 12 years, 12 years like beyond 12 years like adolescents and adults. Why this differentiation is the presentation, the causes, the diagnosis and the management entirely differs as per the age group. So in my first of the videos regarding asthma, uh, in, in the series of asthma today I will be talking uh, as I said. I will be discussing something about the children having V's in less than 5 or 6 years of age. So this topic I have planned to talk uh, as per the, uh, the diagnosis, prevalence, etiology, assessment and then the treatment part and the follow up part. So uh, all this will be a much bigger video than uh, expected so what i have planned is couple of uh, videos in the first set of video we will try to cover as much as possible uh, asthma by far is is probably the most common uh, non-infectious disease what we get to see among children as per some surveys one out of every two children have at least one episode of wheeze before they reach five years of age but not necessarily every one of them continues to have beyond five years of age five or six years of age for that matter many of them tend to resolve they get better over time and uh, see by definition asthma is the bronchoconstriction or the narrowing of the airways which doesn't let the air in and out passage much easily and the term hyperreactivity uh, refers to the tendency of the airways to narrow following exposure to appropriate stimuli suggesting either allergens or pollens. And by definition, asthma is a heterogeneous disease characterized by symptoms of wheeze, cough, shortness of breath, chest tightness which vary over time and intensity and airways showing either a chronic inflammation, hyper responsiveness and airflow limitation. This limitation can be either reversible, recurrent or variable. As per the international study of asthma and allergies in childhood, also known as the ISAC study, estimated that the prevalence of uh, asthma in childhood is anywhere between 2.8 to 37.6 percent. And the burden of disease is high in uh, very young and which is which is very common in the preschool age group see uh, we must understand uh, year on year the disease burden has been increasing in the western countries it has certainly reached a plateau and probably slightly having the peak whereas in developing countries like india the cases have been exponentially large every year we see more and more children coming with uh, uh, coughing, more and more coming with uh, non-infectious diseases, more and more coming with asthma. This is the common trend what we have been seeing, seeing for last uh, couple of decades. And see, I have been in practice for last uh, more than a decade and I have seen a drastic increase in number of children who present to me in my clinic with uh, wheeze. But Fortunately, the mortality rates are very less in children less than 5 years. What well, that means, though you might have the disease and the probability of any child having death or uh, getting hospitalization is far lesser. And the disease is particularly higher among boys than in comparison to girls. But by the time they reach the teenage or adolescent or even the adult age group, Women tend to have higher tendency of uh, asthma than men. And 
those children who do not have the risk factors uh, i mean those children will will tend to have a generally longer remission in comparison to those children who have all the risk factors which we will discuss in detail in the subsequent uh, video and let's see the etiology of asthma asthma is a complex interplay between the genetics and the environment and there are some risk factors which increase the risk of having childhood V's and probably asthma as well see we must understand one statement which is absolutely clear and that is no, not all that who V's have asthma whereas all those who have asthma almost always V's so these are two things which we need to keep in our mind not all that who V's are asthma okay so sometimes there may be a little confusion in the terms which i use but you know you have to bear with it and uh, so let's see some of the risk factors first degree relatives with atopy what that means is any person who has this atopic dermatitis any person who has eczema any person who has this uh, uh, first relative that means a, either a father or mother has it then the probability of uh, uh, asthma goes up in that kind of children if one person one person uh, one uh, parent is affected the probability of the child getting is about less than 50 percent but if the both the parents are affected the probability of child getting the childhood V's and later asthma is as high as 50 percent and above than that other risk factor is the low birth weight so low birth weight itself is a risk factor but at the same time following low birth weight if the child tends to put on weight very rapidly that child also has a higher risk of uh, childhood V's and asthma at a later date prematurity prematurity is another very big risk factor for uh, child developing under 5 V's uh, following any viral infection and following a, um, a respiratory syncytial virus infection, the child tends to have much higher episodes of wheezing than in uh, children who have been born at term. So this is period, you know, we, I happen to see a lot of preterm cases in my hospital and many of them come for follow up and I tell them very categorically, your child is born to develop a lot of respiratory issues so we have to bear with it not just the prematurity many of these prematures uh, prematures also have uh, risk factors at birth for that matter many of them end up having respiratory distress syndrome uh, CPAP uh, requirement a surfactant requirement or even a ventilator uh, requirement many of them would have had micro changes within the lung so that will result in uh, childhood V's at a later date and other risk factors including the household smoking uh, which could be active smoking or a passive smoking or uh, probably the most important risk factor is uh, mother smoking during her pregnancy this is a very important risk factor for a child developing childhood V's and later asthma and personal history of eczema we did discuss about a parent having the eczema and if in any case if the child also has eczema or the atopic dermatitis the probability of that child developing uh, uh, childhood V's and asthma is very very high and um, let us see some uh, the wheezing phenotypes I'm not saying about the asthma phenotypes I'm saying about the wheezing phenotypes in children. They have been broadly discussed into two groups. One is the symptom based, other one is a time trend based. Symptom based means whenever the child has an episodic wheeze, wheezing during discrete time periods often associated with upper respiratory tract infection and there is absolutely a normal child in between 
that is a episodic viral V's child. And then you have the multiple trigger V's. Episodic wheezing happens and at the same time many other triggers also induce wheezing which could be activity, exercise, play, coughing or crying. All those may even trigger another episode. These ones are called as the multi-trigger V's children. And then you have the time trend based uh, symptom. One is this is basically a retrospective diagnosis. I'll, I'll explain. So transient wheeze symptoms begin and end before three years of age. Persistent wheezes that means symptoms appear before the age of three years and continue beyond six years of age. And the late onset wheeze symptoms begin uh, after the age of three years and continue to have wheeze even after that. See, as I said, this is a retrospective analysis. So as soon as you see any child having wheeze in your clinic, you generally do not predict that this baby is going to have a transient wheeze or a recurrent wheeze or a persistent wheeze. We have to make a retrospective analysis. If a child stops having the wheezing episodes after three years of age, probably it is a transient wheezer. A persistent wheezer is the one who continues to have symptoms and the late onset, as the name says, any child who has developed wheezing beyond three years of age is a late onset wheeze in children less than five years of age. And then we have the uh, evaluation of asthma. For that, we need to ascertain the diagnosis, rule out the mimics of asthma, identify the comorbid conditions, identify triggers, assess control and avert the future episodes. So I will detail, I'll have a detailed description of all of these, but to start with, we are going to start with the ascertaining of the diagnosis. So we have one thing in uh, very clear in our uh, textbooks and that is asthma is basically a clinical diagnosis. You take the history, you see the child and then you observe that child over a period of time. Then you have a general understanding of what this child might behave or what it is. And then you label that child as a childhood asthma. Okay, so this is a clinical diagnosis. Whereas if it is substantiated with or rather when you have a test which confidently says okay this child has this or this child has this then that's a different story. But here what we have is a situation where it is basically dependent on the acumen and the acuity of the uh, physician to diagnose a case of asthma. And Understanding the cause of wheezing is particularly important in children and um, and I, I'll repeat few sentences that becomes etched in your thoughts. Wheezing is common in younger children. At least 50% have of children have at least one episode of wheeze before the age of five years. Most often associated with a viral infection, not necessarily due to asthma and this may be even recurrent and not all that wheeze is asthma and to make our job easy there are some criteria for us to tell what is what there's something called as a modified asthma predictive index in any child who has more than four episodes of V's and at least one major criteria or two minor criteria you label that child as having a childhood asthma what are the major criteria? A physician diagnosed atopic dermatitis in the child. Physician diagnosed parental asthma. That's again very important criteria. And allergic sensitization to at least one aeroallergen. See, allergens can be in many ways. Either oral, aeroallergen or even a drug allergy. But what we are talking here is particularly about the aeroallergen, at least one aeroallergen. 
what are these ones we have the house dust mite and then we have the tree pollens and then we have flower pollens and then we have weed pollens and the grass pollens so uh, we can have a separate discussion on all of that but we will not talk about that now uh, if we do a skin prick test and if a child has one aero allergen positivity then that becomes a very major criteria and, and let's look at the minor criteria this is what most often uh, uh, it, it gets confusing wheezing which is unrelated to colds you tend to think it as uh, asthma eosinophilia more than four percent in uh, blood circulation allergic sensitization to milk egg or peanuts see as i said there are many allergens one is oral another one is aero here what we are talking about is a food allergen when we have the milk egg or a peanut ye, these ones do not form the major criteria they are important but they do not form the major criteria for diagnosis of asthma and then once we have seen the child once we have done the uh, clinical assessment we have also done the skin prick test then we have a, something called as the probability of asthma any child who has low probability moderate probability or a high probability of having asthma so let's see which are the indicators which say that this child has low probability or medium okay any child who has cough wheeze breathlessness lasting for less than 10 days and just having about two to three episodes and the child is absolutely symptom free in between the episodes this child has less probability of having childhood asthma and even progressing it to adult asthma and then we have the moderate ones ones which have the same criteria like cough cold breathlessness which are more than 10 days and more than three episodes per year or there may be severe episodes or night worsening in between and my child may have occasional cough wheeze and breathlessness in between episodes as well and the one which has the highest probabilities along with all the aforementioned ones the child also has uh, breathlessness during playing or coughing either atopic dermatitis allergic food sensitization a family history of asthma see uh, these ones increase the probability and put the child for very high risk of getting uh, childhood asthma and asthma at a later date so we must remember one thing and that is these indices have moderate positive predictive value with a very high negative predictive value i'll try to explain what is it so if you in case you have all of these ones you might still go wrong in your diagnosis but if you have no risk factors then the probability of not having the disease is very high when you do not have the symptoms there is very little probability of child getting the disease whereas if you have uh, all these symptoms all the risk factors and despite that your absolute decision making may still be just moderate and not very high okay so i think uh, i'm going to wrap up my uh, class for today or the session for today uh, we might have uh, the the diagnosis part uh, mimics triggers and all other things coming up in the later part in subsequent videos uh, till then bye bye and most importantly um, please like share subscribe and share this uh, video among your friends i know this might be very intriguing and helping me uh, to make many more videos bye bye